Yeah, so right then, guys, before we start this video, quite important, we've got to give a Hong Kong out to the Canadian truckers. Yeah, actually, very impressive what's going on there. And I think they have a good point to make. Yeah. If you don't know anything about it, go and have a look on YouTube. Yeah. It's really impressive just from the point of view of looking at how many trucks have converged on a capital city. Yeah. Personally, I'm not political. I don't know about you, what your views are. It really doesn't matter at this point in time. The UK has backed down and uh, we are now out of things like mandates and wearing masks and all that sort of thing. I, I think you uh, appreciate it of this because I'm tired of it. I'm just tired of the whole um, jab in the arm sort of thing. Um, it's just the way it is and it? you've got to sometimes speak up. Yeah, so the Canadians are doing it, aren't they? So yeah, late shift this week and usually what i do is uh, pop off and have a maggie d's coffee before a start that at least stimulates my brain cells to clock on and look for work to do yeah although we have plenty um i don't usually buy anything else from maggie d's because the nutritional value of their food is pretty crap what i usually do is is just scan the road for roadkill got myself some roadkill today so we'll have a roadkill grill spaghetti bolognese with a bit of michelin tire tread in it and daff front grill plastic <laughs> yeah <laughs> so anyway right Jim and Boner in the workshop this week, and we're going to talk a little bit about 3 8 ratchets. Yeah, or oh, my favourite air ratchet, anyway. Okay, so enjoy the video. Okay, guys and girls, hello, welcome back. And today, this painfully uh, detailed uh, workshop uh, toolbox tour. Let's have a look at my ratchets. Yep. Yeah? So this is so tiny that the name on there is actually blurred, but that's a snap-on one. That's a quarter-inch drive. I have the uh, three-eight drive here, which I'm going to talk about today. Is three-eight drives, and then half-inch, which you can see I've got a composite ratchet because um, yeah, a cheap one because I don't really use half-inch drive much. As I said before in a video simply if you can't turn it with an air gun then you need a wrench and most of the stuff we use air guns if not we use bigger stuff and that's only my toolbox okay so we have a three quarter size here and then inch but the inch I use a, a reducer down to three quarter but we do have an inch air gun with the socket supplied in the workshop which is correct for our workshop so we don't need to supply our own tools for those but it's nice to have inch drive tools However, we use the inch drive gun with uh, an adapter. This one's turned into a station bike. Everybody seems to want to borrow it because they cannot really afford to buy their own adapters and tools. So they come to Uncle Higgy to borrow stuff. So yeah, basically I have quite a lot of 3.8 drive sockets yet, yeah, but it's a bit deceptive in this toolbox. We do have the e-sockets, we do have the six-sided small sockets, we do have the Torx bits. We do have semi-deeps and uh, we do have uh, wobble drives as well, all in the silverware. Yeah. On the other side, I've repeated stuff, but there are different shallow uh, socket sockets, uh, impact wobbles, and of course, again, 3.8 drive semi-deep. Semi-deeps are my uh, go-to always. This is my ratchet drawer, and it's a real mess. Look, there's a Halfords uh, quarter-inch drive ratchet. You can see, actually, that's terrible, isn't it? That's why we've got Boney here. He's Mr. Organized, Mr. Domestic, Mr. Clean. He's also Mr. Slow. He takes ages at doing anything. So, yeah, they've got to give him a bit of uh, time to adjust, I think. But sometimes fitters are hard to domesticate. They fit well at home as well as in the workshop if they can cook and they can clean up after themselves. They will do it at work, won't they? Won't they? Okay, so getting back to the plot now. Laid out a few more tools here. This basically is the, the ones I use the most. In fact, I use most of my tools, but uh, yeah, well, you'll see because the ones that are worn are worn, the ones that are not are not. So, uh, freight drive ratchets, torque wrench, which goes up to 110 Newton meters, and this is also checked every year for calibration. Okay, so we get a little uh, sticker on there to say it's good, and these are adjustable. You can recalibrate them 
if you know how to yeah now this one breaker bar 38 this only has one job and that's to uh, adjust trailer brakes believe it or not this is the only job i use it for and uh, yeah that's it and it has a dedicated socket for this job so if you do a job repeatedly day in day out you will have tools dedicated just to those jobs and that one's also a little grease part as well blue point that came in a blue point set which i broke up yeah so these are interesting you'll like these so this is fairly standard industrial finish throughout drive ratchet okay and i like this it's comfortable you should always put it in the off position yeah so yeah you see that nothing really special other than the price yeah so we've turned it off it's always leaving your toolbox turned off so this one is the interesting one this is actually a uh, um a shallow one yeah you can see the difference already yeah so if you want to get in tight spaces which uh, <laughs> on automobiles you will find you can see the difference because this also came with a set of sockets yep so look that's a shallow sockets shallow uh, driver 38 driver and uh, that is a big difference from standard with the standard socket on it yeah saying that i don't think there is anything such as a standard depth but you can see the shallow normal and semi-deep yep so there is a big difference between all of them yeah nice set of sockets actually tends to be six pointed uh, or six sided sockets yeah but i do have uh, a 12 as well or double just in case and they're the dp ones it is one of those things yeah you buy specialist stuff from specialist tool manufacturers and they do cost you money and you have to justify the price if you use them day in day out you will buy it won't you so you've seen this one haven't you the uh, battery gun snap on one okay this does a 38 drive and it's it is actually quite strong but it's weak at the same time it's it's not as powerful as a milwaukee for instance but it does the job the kit was uh, two guns, half inch drive, three eight, two batteries, and a battery charger. Yep, so you've seen the other one. Batteries are dying on these, not very good, not impressed. They haven't lasted as long as I wanted them to, but you don't get a lifetime warranty on batteries at all. Within this mess on the draw number five is a driver, screwdriver handle for three eight, and I can use an adapter for a quarter inch as well. That came with a blue point socket set. It's not used that much, but you never know. It might be at some point. So here's the piece de resistance. This is uh, a favourite of mine. PCL coupling fitting. Okay, this is what we use in the workshop. Everybody's different, but this is the kitty when it comes to removing from M8 to M12 nuts and bolts. You already get the idea, don't you? No, it's no big deal, it's just an air ratchet, but it has a little facility which I found very good. When you can't undo a bolt, for instance, okay, because this has it's weak, what you can do is give it a tug like that and then carry on turning it. Yep, so you can do it both ways while they're un either undoing or doing up. Yep, so that makes this handy. However, some bolts set screws or nuts are not going to move unless you use some real man force maybe some heat or some uh, violence of some sort and uh, i'm having to resort to using a longer spanner on here it might have been a breaker bar and a socket however that's cracked off i can now undo it so uh, this one has a bonus to it and it's slow yeah that's the other feature to it when we buy tools we always look at all of the operations that come with the tool not just the fact it's shiny okay so we're doing an airbag again plenty of airbags to do because trailer airbags split don't they so here we go oh and the light's gone off <laughs> was that chimp playing a trick on me no he forgot to plug the battery uh, the charger in on the torch so out the head torch and away we go yes this is a nice bit of kit and uh, for air compared to battery it's slimmer and more lightweight the other bonus as I said it's slow so we have a brake chamber here and I just want to show you here yeah this is a bit tight on the banding I can't really get a socket on that that's impact because I've got thick walls so I've had to use some shiny um, chrome wear sorry guys you purists will know that these can crack when using the power tools but it's slow on this job 
I have to make sure that I don't go past the thread because the bolt comes out, the banding drops off and then it's uh, game over because you have to put the chamber back on again. So I like to keep this intact while I'm turning the brake chamber. Okay, little tip here, because power tools are fairly inconsistent, you need to check tighten after you've tightened a bolt or a nut up. Okay, that was an M12 nut being ripped off, which is a 90mm head. It doesn't always happen the way you want it to, especially if you have a bracket or something that obstructs you from putting a power tool in. So you can see here, Chimps using manual power, which is just as well. Okay, use power tools when you can, because you know what we're like. We want to get the jobs done quickly, and then use spanners, sockets, ratchets, whatever, where you can't get power tools in. Unless, of course, the uh, torque is minimal, okay? Or you can't undo it. But anyway, Chimp's been struggling today, poor old boy. You know, his uh, airbag. Plenty of ways to uh, skin a rabbit, as they say, or skin a cow, I don't know. But, um, yeah, one of them is uh, when you're putting an airbag on a trailer is to fit the base first and then pull up the airbag but the rubber it grips onto itself and it's really tight and you could use air to inflate the airbag and push it but that's quite dangerous and we don't want this young chimp to get hurt so what he's doing is trying to push it into the bracket and it doesn't always go on square so yeah this is frustrating yeah he's done it well done chimp yeah so yeah look at this shiny this is a shiny tool. I've had this years, actually. I've had this years. Use it on occasion in a flurry. Put it back in the box, forget about it. Dig it back out again and use it. You see the shine on that? Yes, yeah, lovely shine. Much better than the plastic, dirty plastic on the battery guns. Huh? So anyway, what we'll do is put this in the box. Chimp has another job to do. So he's going to take the box and go off and fit a mud flap, which is going to be a little bit entertaining. Now... Because it's angled, you can get in a tighter space. Simple as that. Yeah, that's what angle ratchets are designed for. Okay. So, uh, they do have a kickback, actually. But, of course, this is slow. Like Captain Slow here. It, it takes its time to undo nuts and bolts. Which is great. If you have the time. And Chimp, apparently, has the time. Right, so, in our workshop, we have two compressors. One spare, one's running all the time. And uh, yeah, it's a screw thread type. 73 decibels is about right for the whole of the workshop. 70 to 73 it gets a bit quieter on the other side. But in this corner, you need to wear earplugs. So we get a good supply of earplugs. Do you know these type? They're the type that you squash down and you push in your ear and they expand, which actually they're really, really good. But of course, you need ear protection in an environment like this simply because of air guns and noises anything over 80 decibels constantly is a real annoyance okay so what you do is you push them down the canal in your ear and as they expand it goes quiet and it's absolutely lovely yeah that's much better oh here comes chimp young friend here my young hairy friend taking a partiality to anything can get free well the company supply it so it's all right so he goes to work on the other side of the workshop and you can see he's got no earplugs in his ears i think because it's quiet there and the unit guys have given him a banana they like him chimp's happy but he, where he comes from this is for trading bananas are money so he's gone over to the night shift guy sandis and uh, sunny who's on my shift He's trying to trade a church for a banana. Well, he doesn't quite know the values of it, but what's he doing it for? Oh, oh yeah, I can see. Double the light, double the light. Yeah, I get it, chimp. Yeah, clever one, huh? Guys like him and they're teaching him all sorts of new things that he's never learned before. Yeah, some of them could be a little bit dodgy, couldn't they? Yeah, chimps, uh, he likes it here. He likes the lorries, he likes the sizes, and he likes the status and the friendship as well. But he does have some serious habits. My tire chalk has been going down quickly and I did actually find out where it had gone. He's eating the damn stuff. 
But because these earplugs look like sweeties, he thinks they're chewy sweeties as well, so he's enjoying himself to those as well. So Boney thought it was funny to leave three dirty earplugs on the workshop top and a banana, see what happened, and Chimp took all of them. Yep, so he's eating those as well. Which Boney thought was really, really funny, and this is the first time I've seen him laugh. But hey ho, Chimps, away you go, mate. He's settling in quite nicely. So Boney's on the opposite side of the spectrum. He's very methodical, he's very serious, he has to get things right, things have to be tidy. And he's very reserved and introverted, which means that he's not really connecting with people. It's not a big deal. He's doing his thing and he's part of a team nonetheless. Maybe he'll come out of his shell sometime. But he found the oscilloscope, which was a, an interesting thing. He took to it. And we thought Prepper Man would be the first one to adopt this equipment because he likes electronics, but no. Boney's now doing diagnostics, which you need methodology for. You need to be thorough to get things right, especially when you have deep problems. So, uh, yeah, this is just a simple thing, and he's going to show you here. His wheel speed sensor is looking for the voltage, which is actually quite low, and that has been kicking up a problem. So, uh, yeah, found that. But I do like his tidiness. I am messy compared to this guy, which uh, this is why I've got him in to sort out my toolbox and everything else, as well as help out with problems. So back to the real world, and this is actually quite worrying. Chimp is using a drill and he's holding the spray suppression on the other side. Now to get the maximum hold, he's going to hold it somewhere around about where the drill is, and you do not know where that drill bit is going to come through, are you? So uh, this is a bit of a safety issue, but it looks like Chimp hasn't actually drilled all the way through, which is good. Okay, I'm sure some of you have put drills through your fingers before. I know I have. So here's a humorous bit here. Chimp has marked it out once, drilled it once, got it wrong, and now has to drill it out again. Well, fair enough. It's not going to get seen, and he's not drilling up against the tire. And he's doing a sensible thing. The drill is actually running around the right way as well. So yeah, he has a visible where he can see where the drill's going through without a hand behind. What I've noticed in this trade over the years is that you'll do the same repetitive job over and over again and you'll have the tools to do it and then everything changes and then you have to readapt if you want to be productive. Yep, so good tool, we all love it. 